Lucky Boys podcast. At one point, you know, Chinatowns were these bachelor societies where there are actually like 200 men to one woman. So just like telling them like how hard, you know, must dating be back then, right? So that's why there are actually a lot of brothels and opium dens back in the day. In People favor find- of the women. <laughs> <laughs> so there were 200 men. To one woman. To, to every one woman, woman there. One woman, yeah. 200 Asian men? Like yeah. Chinese men? To, to one woman? One wom- Asian woman, yeah, in Chinatown. Did, did any of that one-child policy have anything to do with it back in China? No, I think it had to do with the 1882 Chinese exclusion Yeah, because the women children weren't allowed to come in here because they can't help build the railroads, right? Work in the factory. So only the Chinese men were allowed to come in here. And even then, it was pretty small amounts, like only 105 people per year that could come in here. But it was just like fascinating because we would show like a picture of what it looked like back in the day in Chinatown. It was like all men with like top hats and very different than yeah. nowadays. And this might even go way back in history. It's like, well, why did the Chinese people come to America in the first place, right? It's because like there were a lot of poverty in China. So like America was a young country back then. So then they were like, okay, let's go to America to find opportunity, right? The railroad, the gold rush. Uh, in the West Coast, but they had no intention of staying anyways. So they were going to go back home after, you know, they became wealthy. But then, like, some of them did not. So then they find jobs in the city, right? And then uh, they didn't decide to, like, have the entire family come over. So that's another reason why there's not a lot of women. Did they initially migrate first more over to California? Yes. On the West Coast? West Coast. Yeah, because that makes a lot of sense Shorter to me. distance that's, to travel. Yeah, shorter mm-hmm. distance to travel. And well, when I went, when I went out to California and I started making, I guess, more friends um, north and south, up and down there. They, they were all like, and I met their parents, some of them, and they're just all perfect English. Every, I was like, how are all you guys? <laughs> yes. Uh, like, like fourth generation? Like, like, yeah, it was, no, it was, let me tell you how awesome it was to be able to speak to them. Yes. You know, like communicate with them because most of them, like, my, 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 I'll admit my Chinese is not the best <laughs> and it's it's very broken. It's very, uh, what they call juk sing, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And yeah. I mean, I can get by a little bit as if we go to a restaurant, if, you know, the courtesy stuff when I meet parents, but to get into a deep conversation or when they ask me stuff, I get embarrassed because I'm like, oh man, like my vocabulary is not strong. <laughs> and when I went out there, all of them, every single one of them spoke English and I just, I was blown away. And then when I asked them, I'm like, how many, like, oh yeah, well, like, I'm seventh generation here. I was like, geez. Because back in New York, right, all of our friends, like, we're the first ones. Yeah. We're the first yeah. American born uh, yeah. kids. So it's just, they're, they're way ahead of us there. It is. It is quite fascinating. So my brother is in San Francisco, right? He would tell me, like, oh my God, like all the grandmas and grandpas speaks English, right? We have like Asian people working at Costco. And I was like, okay, that's really cool. <laughs> My favorite was when I watched this documentary about Southern Chinese and hearing the Southern Chinese grandma speak with the Southern oh, accent. I saw <laughs> that. Was it, was it, was it Mississippi? Well, yeah, I think it might be Mississippi. Yeah, yeah but it was so fascinating. It was a great. They, was it with the one with the Chinese food? The cooking, they, one, yeah. the cooking one. Part. What of was the story? I, 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 about the about the family. Oh, I think it was just like there's Chinese cooking in the South, right? Like, yeah, because like, they were talking about like different cooking different types of chinese food like in la mm. and new york and mm-hmm. the south and how's different i mean just hearing her speak was just incredible <laughs> it just blew my mind <laughs> it, just, it was and, and her because she has the southern charm mm. when, when she was saying she has it, this grandma she just <laughs> you just instantly fell in love with her mm. yeah she was great it's like a grandma that uh that welcomes everyone into her home like just an air of authenticity mm-hmm. You know, it's just very strong. But but when she spoke, it was like, "Hey, y'all, <laughs> don't y'all call okay, me around. come right yeah. in." Yeah, I was just like, "What?" I was like, "What is this?" And it was just all this. She had this southern charm. It was just, it was. And but then she's Asian, and she had this Asian thing going for her too. And it was just like, "Oh my gosh, can can she can she be more adorable?" It was, it was just yeah. There needs to be a Pixar anim- animated movie. I love that. That'd be really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like what the media shows, what they portray, it, it, and oh, you know, just the content that's out there. It, it, it's just couldn't be further from reality. You know, at times I think it's outdated. It doesn't work anymore. Lucky Boys Podcast.